Lipoff, MHS organizers with somebody very special um, today, Jim Abrams, the founder of the Charlie Foundation and the inspiration really behind Metabolic Health Summit. Um, he's been a huge source, source of inspiration personally for me for a mm -hmm. lot of the work that Angela's done with Dominic D'Agostino. Yeah. Um, and he's got a pretty incredible story. And this guy is a, <laughs> I call him God, but this man here has, has got an incredible history um, beyond really the epilepsy space as a movie producer, director, writer, uh, some movies you probably have heard of, Airplane, Hot Shots. Um, there's another one, First Do No Harm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Naked Gun, but First Do No Harm is really about uh, epilepsy and a mother sort of dealing with a childhood diagnosis of epilepsy. And um, Meryl Streep was the, the star in that movie. It was just pretty incredible. So very well-known person in, in the uh, Hollywood world right here in Santa Monica is where we're at right now at Jim Abrams' home. And I, I really, though, his work with the Charlie Foundation, I would say, is just profound, just incredible what you've done over the years. So I, I want to talk a little bit about where this sort of all started. I know uh, Charlie was about one years old when things, com life completely changed. Yeah, he started <clears throat> having seizures around his first birthday and his, they got, at first they were kind of subtle, but they got more profound and uh, a, a variety of different seizures and they would last longer, and they got scarier. So we started to seek out medical advice. And it was a time in my career when things were going very well. And the only reason I mention that is because we did then have, there were lots of people I worked with and for who were sponsors at hospitals and things. Mm -hmm. So we got audiences with some of the most highly respected pediatric neurologist in the United States. So Charlie wound up having seizures in the arms of the chief of pediatric neurology at UCLA and Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, um, Boston Children's Hospital, Seattle Children's Hospital. So we went, uh, we really got to see some of the best and, and, that, and that was very fortunate and they were very much unanimous in their treatment options. <clears throat> they said, you can give them drugs, there are surgeries available, and then you're pretty much out of luck. So we gave Charlie all the available drugs at the time in various combinations, and he suffered through all the adverse effects of those drugs, and nothing stopped his seizures. And um, so then, one doctor from UCLA recommended a brain surgery. So at 18 months, he had a brain surgery, which not only didn't work, but had some pretty profound side effects also. In, and, um, but within a day of the surgery, his seizures came back. And then we were pretty much told, and I remember the day very clearly, um, we're out of luck and Charlie was going to have a life of continued seizures, drugs, and what is known as progressive retardation. Gosh, what was that like to hear that okay. as sort of a parent and not yeah. know where you had to go, really? Well, yeah, yeah. I'll get choked up. Now, I remember the day, I remember the doctor, I remember us driving home from the doctor and having to pull off the road because Nancy and I were crying too hard to drive. And um, it's, that was the darkest. When you think there is no hope, that for us was, and I think for many, is what we felt was the darkest moment. So shortly after that, I was at UCLA. We were at UCLA. His main doctor, Dr. Shields at UCLA, kind of oversaw Charlie's treatment. And, um, and I, I stopped at the UCLA Medical Lab. This is 93, so there was no internet. There was no like, Google at the time, right? The library is the thing with books. it. Just, the books that? are yeah. right, and do we decimal system? That's pretty like that. incredible that you thought to, hey, I'm going to go to this medical library and see what right. I can find. Well, but it, it, it wasn't that heroic. What I, what I was really trying to do was try to figure out how do families and kids who are that sick make it through life. 
I didn't think we were at, we took Charlie to the best of the best. Right. And nobody ever said anything about diet, ever. And so I was looking for what's going to happen. Is he going to be able to live independently? Is he going to be with us? Is he going to live? You know, stuff like that. How are his siblings going to get, make it through this? How are Nancy and I going to make it through this? That's what, those are the kind of questions I was looking for answers to. But when you go to a medical library and you start doing any research, and trust me, I'm not a researcher, um, it's pretty easy to come across ketogenic diet. Charlie's epilepsy syndrome is called Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, and which is a very serious epilepsy. And so I would go to the back of the text, of a medical text. I have some here I could show you. You have a medical text, and I'd look at Lennox Gastel, and right before L would be K, J-J-K-L. Mm -hmm. And there was ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. So I would look, in, <laughs> and there was this thing called the ketogenic diet. And it's in, it was in tons of texts, going back to the 1920s, documenting both how 1921, how the diet was um, developed at the Mayo Clinic, and then in subsequent texts, um, the results of using the diet on kids with bad epilepsy. And what was astounding was that it was different doctors, mm -hmm. different decades, mm -hmm. different hospitals on a similar patient population and virtually identical outcomes. Basically, a third of the kids in all these books, were all these, these doctors weren't in collusion or anything. Right. They didn't yeah. know right. each other. Right. There was no conferences to bring them all together. No, there were no <laughs> conferences. Yeah. You know, and, but about a third of the kids had their seizures go away. Another third were significantly improved, and for a third of the diet didn't work. Mm -hmm. That's what, those are Why not? Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Imagine, I was thinking, what if there was some other well, cancer yeah. and, and you found that you can cure cancer mm -hmm. for, for a third of the patients? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be on the front page of every right. thing? Right. Well, now the diet's being really explored with cancer. Yes, too. now it is. A variety of other things. Right, right, which right. is right. right. phenomenal. Yeah. So when you found this, I was just going to say, when you found this, and you looked at what the diet was sort of comprised of, what mm -hmm. sort of ran through your mind? Because then, I mean, nobody mm -hmm. was really talking about it at all. Now keto is a big buzzword. Right. Right. But at the time, you had right. to be like quite the you know, pioneer to sort of say, you know what? We're gonna try this, we're gonna do this. Worked alongside yeah. Millicent Kelly, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Um, somebody we'll talk about here soon, uh, shortly. But what was that like for you in seeing what this diet comprised of, knowing what sort of the, the right, you know, recommended suggestions were in, for nutrition. As a parent, I'm sure it was a better option though than what, where you were. Well, that's the thing. I, I don't think we paid too much attention to the nutritional aspects of mm -hmm. the diet bag or the downside of, or what, or the myths even mm -hmm. about the diet back then. All we knew is this kid was sick as could be and he wasn't getting better. And, and that you were facing right. so insurmountable. It was insurmountable and I kept, you know, and let's say there was truth. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, but let's assume there was truth and okay, so he's gonna develop some cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. being on a high fat diet. If, but I remember us saying, well, okay, so he's gonna die of a heart attack at 60, mm -hmm. but he's gonna make it to 60 and yeah. have a decent life. Yeah. Right. So right. even, you know, the, those kind of, and of course mm -hmm. now we know that the, mm -hmm demonization of fat was based on poor science. Mm -hmm. So, but back then that's how we dismissed it. The biggest challenge I think was the, there were no, today the recipes, yeah. and keto yeah. diet calculator, and all sorts of things to make the diet much simpler. Back then, I think Charlie must have been one of like a dozen people in the world who was on a ketogenic diet. Wow. So, and there was no food labeling. Right. And so oh, Nancy wow. would spend forever in yeah. health food stores <laughs> trying to find something with no sugar that wow. it had taste. Right. You know? that, that's a whole different battle that you guys Yeah, have it was completely <laughs> oh different. It was, wow. it, yeah, so those, those were the, the challenges. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like to eat. Mm -hmm. And the other big challenge is uh, Charlie has two older siblings. Mm -hmm. And how to 
we really messed up in that regard because what we would do is we would feed Charlie separately mm -hmm. from his siblings, which was a big mistake because he was on the diet for five years and it, it just it got to be very awkward and it took years for his brothers and sisters and him to work through mm -hmm. that weird family arrangement. Today, I think families frequently mm -hmm. engage in the therapy together. Mm -hmm. And the parents and the siblings, yes. and, you know, all eat a version of the ketogenic diet so that the kid isn't an outcast. Right. Yeah. I, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, you know, how did that, I'm uh, sure you decided to do the diet, um, how did that conversation go when you went back to his neurologist? How did... I mean, had he even heard of it? Did he know about it? Or? Well, Don Shields, mm -hmm. who ran pediatric neurology at UCLA, who was mm -hmm. Charlie's primary uh, neurologist, and John Freeman, mm -hmm. the doctor from yeah. Johns Hopkins, who really championed the diet, were buddies. Okay. So, of course, he knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a paper when I was doing my research, I found, so Charlie was, got sick in 1993. Mm -hmm. In 1992, in Epilepsy, mm -hmm. John Freeman published a paper uh, about um, 58 consecutive kids who were as sick as Charlie, who he put on the ketogenic diet. So his buddy, Don Shields, knew about the paper. Mm -hmm. And the outcome of, of uh, Freeman's study was that of the 58 uh, consecutive kids who were on multiple daily drugs, multiple daily seizures, 29% um, became seizure free. So she always knew. Yeah. They knew. And, and so we went to, Nancy and I went to, to Dr. Shields, and sort of at the same time that we were finding out about the diet, she had heard about an herbalist who worked out of a strip mall in Houston, Texas. So we went to Donald Shields, and we said, well, there are these two alternatives we're trying to think about. One is, uh, uh, Herbalist who works out of a strip mall in Houston, and the other is and the other is this diet, this ketogenic diet thing. Mm. And he said, "Flip a coin. I don't believe either will work." Wow! Oh my gosh! And we took his advice and flipped a coin, and it came up strip mall in Houston, Texas. So we flew with Charlie to the strip mall, Here's met an it. herbalist in the back room of some store, and he was a nice fellow. And he gave Charlie some herbs, and we tried them for a week or two, and they didn't work. So then finally I called mm -hmm. Dr. Freeman at Johns Hopkins and mm -hmm. said, explain the situation, he said, send them in Charlie's records. Mm -hmm. He did, and, um, and so he said, bring Charlie out, mm -hmm. we'll try the diet, and we did. And within a couple of days of initiating the diet, and Charlie was at, on four medicines, he was having at least a dozen seizures every day. Gosh. And within two days, his seizures were gone. Wow, what was that moment like for you? I can't imagine just going <laughs> through the, the yeah. turmoil, the mm -hmm. you know, pulling yeah. over on the side of the road, the tears. Yeah. What was that like for you in that moment, and Nancy? I think sort of we didn't trust it at first. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, when, mm -hmm. yeah, when you start a new drug, a new anti-epileptic drug, there's frequently a honeymoon period. Yeah. And that's what they call it, right? And where the seizures go away, but then the brain works its way around whatever was temporarily stopped. So at first, I don't think we really trusted it, but it just worked. And within a month, Freeman, Dr. Freeman, was so he'd been working with the diet for decades, yeah. and he was confident mm -hmm. it wasn't a combination of the four drugs mm -hmm. that Charlie was on plus the diet. He was confident it was the diet. Mm -hmm. So he stripped away the drugs within a month. Wow. I know, that doesn't That's happen not today. Anymore. No, no. no, today <laughs> even for kids who have that yeah. positive a reaction to the diet, I yeah. think it takes months yeah. to, to, to win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Freeman was hell bent in. We're done. We're done. <laughs> so within a month he was drug and seizure free and then we start to really think, holy cow, and he, yeah. you know, we got him back. That must, oh gosh, mm -hmm. that moment I can't imagine. Just yeah. as a parent, just going through what you did, 
finding that, getting him off the drugs, getting him back, and then was that sort of, I can imagine at that point, you're like, we have to, we have to tell other people. I mean, yes. there's a lot of parents that would be faced in that sort of situation where just the exhaustion, I can imagine like going through something like that and getting to that place of just like, okay, we've got our family, but you said, how can we now take right. this mm -hmm. horrible situation now, you know, we've got our son back, but now help other people. Mm. That says a lot about who you are as, as a person. And you've now helped hundreds, thousands of, of other families going through yeah. the same thing. You're giving hope through the ketogenic diet. So explain how then, you know, that moment where you said, I, I need to do something about this and, and what that looked like. Well, I think <clears throat> once we trusted that the, the, the diet was working, then you kind of take a look outside we've been in such a little mm -hmm. shell for so for that period of time and then but then you start to look around and you realize there's a world epilepsy population of 60 million people mm -hmm. most of those people start having seizures as children and nobody i mean some fraction of a fraction of one percent ever hear about a ketogenic diet or get accurate information about a, a, a ketogenic diet. And so, and, and almost as devastating as watching what Charlie had gone through mm -hmm. and what our family had gone through was realizing that it was all unnecessary. Yes. If, if at any point any one of these folks had said, well, you know, you can try this diet. And I think even if it had been the first thing out of the box, just knowing yeah. Nancy and me, we would say, okay, well, let's try this diet. So all that stuff, all those drugs, all those seizures, yeah. the surgery, that was during all unnecessary. His brain, I agree yes. That. And it was half a year exactly during his first and second year mm -hmm. of brain development. Yeah. Which is was, incredible time right. for the brain. Exactly. So then once you understand that that was unnecessary, they didn't have to do that. We didn't have to go through that. Then that's very motivating. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and especially when you realize how many millions and millions of people were, are exactly in our shoes. Same little kids, having seizures all over the place, taking drugs, and not getting better. Gosh. So you really you founded the Charlie Foundation in the early 1990s, I believe it was. Yeah. And then you had actually your first conference, I believe, in 1995. Yeah. That right? Was quick. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a man on a mission. Yeah. Right he's <laughs> like, I make movies, I make nonprofits, I'm changing the world. Yeah. Like, right. Really, uh, it's huge inspiration yeah. in that respect. And so you actually created a conference in Redondo Beach. Yes. Which I live right down the road yeah. from Redondo. Uh, to bring people together to try to move this forward. Explain a little bit about that. And well, it, it, the other, uh, Dr. Freeman from Johns Hopkins is a huge partner when we, when we started. Mm -hmm. And he had been, you know, he had a book about the ketogenic mm -hmm. diet that he couldn't get published. So we helped him get it published. And we got, we came like partners. Mm -hmm. And he was a wonderful guy and a real maverick, smart as a whip. And he kind of did what he felt like doing. He knew yeah. the diet worked. So we really worked hand in hand putting that cool. together. And the reason, so the invitations to that uh, conference were sent on a Hopkins oh, okay. letterhead oh, nice. with Charlie Foundation and stuff. So that gave tremendous credibility. So the turnout was, was great. And it, it was his idea, which was a terrific idea too. Was for it was a one day conference, and for the lunch to serve a ketogenically balanced lunch. Mm -hmm. That's great. Do you so remember what I, you had? I just remember some real heavy cream on the jello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On jello? I know. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but nobody Sugar knew. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And but nobody did know. I mean, he took everybody and everybody. So oh, that's immediately, all, yeah. all these because one of the top 10 missed is it's unpalatable. That's right. But it's, and, it's really he, and you guys you know, showcase a lot of that on your right. website. Right. You've got these beautiful recipes. If you yeah. got, haven't seen mm -hmm. charliefoundation.org, um, you'll find tons of amazing recipes. I, I posted yeah. a few on the Metabolic Health Summit Instagram, just they're, they're beautiful. Yeah. And they taste amazing. Mm -hmm. That tastes good. So it's yeah, they taste good. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. So it was yeah. very successful. 
And since then, you've, I mean, you've helped inspire families, you've helped educate them, you've given hope to people. You work alongside Beth, um, who we know well, is a great dietitian, yeah. has helped so many people, and it's yeah. actually her work expands now into cancer and a variety of other yes. things. Um, so, you know, explain sort of now where you are and seeing sort of keto explode and mm. what you would like to see in, in the coming years with the diet and its application. Beth, by the way, has taught the diet in person at over 200 hospitals worldwide. She's amazing. Yeah, she's she incredible. Yes. And I should have mentioned also that Dawn Martens, who is a mom of a kid who's on the diet, mm -hmm. uh, oversees all the recipes. Mm -hmm. And she's written Great. two of the cookbooks and stuff too. So our little core group is pretty passionate. They'll both mm -hmm. hopefully be out um, there at the at <laughs> Yes, along both with will Jim. be there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and I think that you're right, the, the diet has exploded and now it's out there for, with so many different applications. Mm -hmm. But there is a difference, I think, between using the diet to get in shape, to lose weight, for to sure. train for a triathlon, and using it for a specific health problem. Yeah. And so I think our focus will always be to, you know, to, to focus on the applications for, for health problems, mm -hmm. just serious health problems. It's not that these other applications don't work and aren't mm -hmm. valuable and, you know, we know that it's mm -hmm. good for brain health in general okay. and all sorts of stuff, but for I think our focus will always, always be on medical mm -hmm. applications. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with some researchers, right? <clears throat> um, partnered with like John Rowe. And, yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the research that has been a part of what Charlie Foundation has done or just the area? Here's what, well, yeah, so we now know that the diet is, can be effective with early onset Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. autism, mm -hmm. Parkinson's, um, did I say autism? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there are emerging applications. I'll be on, on here. I'll fess up to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I go to those meetings all the time mm -hmm. and I listen to your lectures and your colleagues' lectures mm -hmm. and I don't understand. <laughs> but, That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But I know what you're They're talking about. I know. Yeah, this year we're bringing influencers <laughs> in to kind of translate some of that. That is, that is exactly. This year we are really wanting to bridge the education gap. That's yeah. like the theme yeah. of that Metabolic Health Summit yeah. moving forward. To show so. some cooking demonstrations. Yeah. Right. People who have actually experienced it themselves right. and can yeah. kind of talk about it and like this is how I do it in my kitchen and what this right. means. Right. It's so important, obviously, the scientists and the researchers and clinicians in the trenches, right. but we've got to have a way that we can explain that. And that's really yes. what the Charlie Foundation is all exactly. about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. More of that intersection. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah, that, and that's, if that's what we are, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. And again, even though I don't understand, it doesn't mean I don't get excited, because I know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. I just don't <laughs> Well, I feel the same way. You know, I go yeah. to lectures by other scientists. It's a different feel. You know, you're like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. That's what's so cool about these types of events, like the Global Symposium yeah. that I know Charlie Foundation has always been integrally you know, part of the Metabolic Health Summit, is having neurologists beside oncologists, beside, um, you know, uh, diabetes specialists. It's, right. it's right. incredible right. just sharing that information. Because when we stay in our own little corners yes. and we only talk to other cancer scientists, right. we don't share that information. We can't move the, the, you know, the field forward together. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. It's so important to yeah. have all those people in the same room. Right. Especially, too, with now as the diet gains more and more popularity. Yes. Both in lifestyle as well as disease application to bring those people in, too, to share right. those experiences, those success stories. Right to share Charlie's story. What's really interesting, I think, about Charlie's story is that he went on the ketogenic diet, and I think at one point maybe sort of started to develop his own lifestyle, maybe shifted away from the diet at one point, and his seizures... Returned. They returned, yeah. okay. And how is he doing now? Like, is, oh, it, yeah. is, like, is he on back on the ketogenic diet? No, so he, our, his experience with the diet back then and I think today, typically, the kid does as well as Charlie, mm -hmm. seizure-free, drug-free, two years. Right. They, they feel comfortable weaning him off. So when he was two years into it, maybe three years old, mm -hmm. something, he, we weaned him off, but the yeah. seizures returned. Okay, they did. So, so 
we put them back on the diet for another two years, which is interesting too because it's it, 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 there's a definite cause and effect that because he, the same thing happened the second time. You know, as mm -hmm. soon as we put them back on the diet, the seizures went away. So it was the diet. That yeah. Was, yeah. It was. Um, so he stayed on for another two years, and then we weaned him off, and he, so he was five or six or something like that. Yeah. Now he's 26. Okay. He's never eaten ketogenically since. Okay. He's never taken another anti-epileptic drug. That's what that's I, I thought. That's yeah. What, yeah, I was just like, that's, in, that's incredible. But that is a fairly common experience right. with mm -hmm. epileptic patients. They yes. go on the diet for, it's typically about a couple of years or so. Right. I know you guys kind of had a different experience, but then seizures don't return. But the, one of the great things about the diet though is, I, I mean, I live ketogenically just because yep. I love right. <laughs> the food, how it right. feels. So really, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of these patients don't necessarily maybe want to get off at a certain point. Yeah. Um, as more and more education hopefully um, infiltrates you know, the mainstream. Yeah. One thing I'd like to see more of is, is adults um, being, you know, obviously in addition to children, but I, I come into contact with so many adults that, is, that, that say, I didn't even, I didn't, this is not really offered. Yeah. It was never really offered to me. Yeah. It's really not a part of the conversation. Um, we had Mike Dancer in, in years past who uses the diet, you know, as an adult, talks about mm -hmm. how that's really saved his life. Um, so what are your thoughts on, on seeing this and, with epileptic adult patients? Um, oh, I think it's a tragedy. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the practice with adults is basically the same as with kids. The issue that is used is compliance with adults because mm -hmm. there are food preferences, but the outcomes tend to be the same. So if you crunch the numbers, if we go mm -hmm. back to this world epilepsy population of 60 million people, and we know now that half the people who use a ketogenic diet or a version mm -hmm. of the ketogenic mm -hmm. diet have a seizure reduction of at least 50%. So if you Crunch that number, that means, uh, and, and let's say today, optimistically, there are 10,000 people worldwide with epilepsy on a ketogenic diet. That's an optimistic epilepsy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think it's very optimistic. But let's just say that's it. That means that out of every 10,000 people with epilepsy who could benefit from a ketogenic diet, um, there are three people who use a ketogenic diet. Wow. Out of every 10,000, three people use a ketogenic diet. Wow. To me, that's, that's an enormous human tragedy. And if you extrapolate that back to the 1920s when the diet was yeah. developed, it breaks my heart. Yeah. What needs to happen, in your opinion, to make it a much larger part of, I know there's a lot of physicians who are actually offering it, right. mm -hmm. in some cases as a first line of defense yes. versus you know mm -hmm. drugs first, yes. but what needs to happen for this to really Mm -hmm. sort of uh, breakthrough as as this is the standard this is something that is always alongside standard of care you have drugs you have surgery you have diet yeah what has to happen to see that hopefully in the next maybe five years hopefully <laughs> well i don't want to be too cynical about it okay. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, you know, i'll quote uh charlie's doctor from from um ucla from 1994. he said until someone figures out a way to make eggs and bacon with cream sauce into a drug. In other words, so somebody can make money on this diet, it won't become popular. And he was, at the time, he was sort of reviled by his colleagues and sort of mm -hmm. people on the street said, wow, that's a candid fellow. He mm -hmm. said that on Dateline. When you <laughs> he said that on Dateline. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so, a great YouTube video, watch <laughs> it. Dateline, yeah. Jim Abrams, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> And they had, as a nationalist, but he was in as new um, products and foods and supplements have, are being developed for the ketogenic diet. It's becoming more popular. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, and we were talking earlier too, what, what I had underestimated when we started the Charlie Foundation enormously was the forces that were, that would not encourage a ketogenic diet, including mm -hmm. Um, the pharmaceutical or medical device industry, including hospitals, which tend to evaluate new protocols based on revenue streams as opposed to efficacy, including 
the sugar and processed food industries, which have no interest in seeing a ketogenic diet, um, uh, insurance industry, which is, will readily reimburse a physician for a medical device mm -hmm. or ACTH hormone therapy or drugs, it's, today it's still a struggle mm -hmm. to get the, the dietitians reimbursed at most hospitals worldwide. Yeah. It's crazy. So there are a lot of forces at work mm -hmm. that have to be overcome. Right. And, and I that's think that's why people like you, uh, you know, the parents of kids who have these problems, really building that momentum. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of players at hand, but what we can do, people on the ground, you know, people right. on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think that really highlights how a lot of that lies in our hands. Totally, from the ground up, yeah. really being a voice for, for people who, you know, children who yeah. might not have that voice and um, creating the nonprofit creating a movie about the oh, yeah. situation. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie First Do No Harm yeah. with Meryl Streep, uh, it's pretty incredible. You can find it actually on the Charlie Foundation website, mm -hmm. um, as well as I think you said YouTube, there's yeah. some clips there um, too. I think YouTube just has the whole, runs the, the whole The whole thing, well, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> the I more people do. can watch it, the oh, better. Yeah, I hope they do, because yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, sure it's about a successful diet therapy for epilepsy, but it's about in empowerment and how each of us is largely in control of our own medical destinies yeah. and the medical destinies of our children. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really, took us a while to work our way through that learning curve, but I think it's important. Yeah. 100%. I will say I'm very optimistic for the future. I, uh, we work at a college of medicine yes. in um, Tampa and we have student groups, medical student groups coming to us and asking us if we come do a lecture on right. the work that you're doing. They want to know this. I think there's a new generation. Of That's phenomenal. That yep. There's, can I tell one? Please. Yeah, so. yes. We're going to open this up to questions here soon, so stay tuned, guys. We've we become friendly with a guy named Tom Minahan, mm -hmm. and Tom is a doctor. He's an emergency room doctor, and his daughter, uh, Mallory, has epilepsy. And he did exactly, went through the same routine sure. that Nancy and I went through, gave Mallory all the drugs, everything, and finally came across the ketogenic diet, and now she's doing much better. And as part of Tom's job as an emergency room mm -hmm. physician, he travels around the United States, and he talks to other emergency room doctors about mm -hmm. emergency room protocols and stuff. Mm -hmm. And because of his experience, he now has added two questions to his lecture. And he'll talk to as many as 100 doctors at a time. And I've been to some of them, pretty amazing. So he'll say, at the end of his lecture, he'll say, how many of you doctors have ever heard of a ketogenic diet? Mm -hmm. And his guesstimate, and when I was there, it seemed accurate, was about three to 5% wow. that wow. heard of a ketogenic diet. And then his follow-up question is, of those of you who've heard of a ketogenic diet, of the three to 5% of you who've heard of it, how many of you know it can be a cure for epilepsy? And no one's ever known that. Uh, so it's very encouraging to hear that yeah. you know students are, are yeah. reaching out and wanting to learn. Absolutely, it's, it is exciting. If you ask the average, and I do this all the time since I've been with Tom, I, if you ask the average physician, how much time did you spend in medical school learning about diet therapies and nutrition? A couple of days, maybe. Yeah. My husband's a physician. He had a three-hour lecture. Right. Oh my gosh. Right. Really? Yeah. That's so that, that's. <laughs> it's incredible. Right. It should and work I, the pillar needs to be done. Um, yes. yes, it should be the pillar, yeah. and it's basically swept under the rug. Well, that's where we're bringing all the physicians who mm -hmm. do, do have the interest who mm -hmm. are, you know, doing the clinical research together right. mm -hmm. so we can continue to, you know, gain momentum yeah. and keep this ball rolling because it, it really does have the power to change, I think, the world and a lot of people suffering from disease that maybe they might have better options if they knew yeah. that this nutrition approach was available. and. Right. and so do you, does anybody in uh, watching right now have any questions? Because please, this is really a great opportunity to be sitting down with Jim. Um, if you have any questions, please let them roll in. And um, we're just so excited to have you as a part of Metabolic Health Summit. Yeah, I'm thrilled. And to be supporting in some way. So 50% of ticket sales from California residents at our gala dinner, which is gonna be on Saturday night, um, February 2nd. 
in conjunction with Metabolic Health Summit go to the Charlie Foundation and Max Love Project, uh, which, which is another organization that is involved in uh, yeah, yeah. education around uh, mostly around cancer. So it's it's really a, a, an exciting thing to be able to support what you're doing in some way. And so Jim's going to be speaking at the, the gala mm -hmm. dinner, which will be great. Um, mm -hmm. He's quite the... He's quite the speaker. I got to see him in band, <laughs> um, and it'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun. And we can't thank you enough for the work that you have done because of how many lives it's impacting, how much hope it's giving people, yeah. and two, how much inspiration it's given yeah. us personally in our sure. work. So yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jim, <laughs> for all you've you've been doing. Well, thank um, you, and I'm, and the, the, one of the wonderful byproducts, offshoots of meetings mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. you're doing, is just it, it is. Everybody getting together yeah. under one roof of a similar belief, so it's not just trying to push a boulder uphill. Yeah. You know, they already come in, walk in, wanting to know, understanding the potential, and sharing information. Mm -hmm. And it's so exhilarating. Yeah. And it's like, for me, there's always like a two week hangover. <laughs> there yeah. is. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. After, 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 yeah, after, yeah, after totally. conference, yeah, <laughs> I will. Say. And I'm like, I want to change the world, exactly. but I want to take a nap. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You know, well, we're so excited to be teaming up with you. I've just been a big fan of your work in many different ways. I used to be in the TV industry, so as a oh, yeah. you know, movie producer, definitely a fan there. But then also what you're doing with kids, more than anything, is such an, an inspiration to us. So, okay. um, do we have any any questions there? We got okay. Well, if you guys have questions you're watching the replay I know this is a Sunday afternoon so if you're watching the replay ask them below because we'll um, be answering questions as they come in people can watch this after the live is over which is great um, and uh, we are just thrilled to have you out um, right here in Los Angeles in Long yeah. Beach um, January 31st through February 3rd there's still right. tickets um, available early bird as well and mm -hmm. Charlie Foundation will be there too with a booth at our keto expo so mm -hmm. you can learn more um, if maybe your child uh, is, is suffering from epilepsy and you want some other options, what would you say to parents right now that are in maybe a similar place that you were before you discovered the ketogenic diet? Hmm. What would you say to somebody that, you know, there might be an option that could potentially help their, their child? What would you say to them? Well, I think over the years, more than anything, what I've said, and to moms in particular, is trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. And if this feels wrong, that's your kid. And there's like a biological yeah. thing that goes on between, especially, and it's not that we dads don't love our kids and everything, sure. but there's, if, if, if you're, that's just been the advice I give. If, yeah. if it doesn't feel right to you, this doesn't look right, and you're, don't be intimidated and trust your instincts exactly. and go out and, yeah, and you're not looking for a golfing partner, you're looking for your kid to get better. And so you can feel comfortable taking off your gloves mm -hmm. and trust your instincts. That's great advice. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank I you. want to give you a hug because it's <laughs> all the great work that thank you're you. doing. Thank, thank you, you. Thank seriously, you. For, for being here today. And I appreciate thank it. Thank you for watching. And uh, Jim will be uh, with us at Metabolic Health Summit in January. And we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>